My name is Nipsey Hussle. I'm from LA, Slots in the Crenshaw area, you know. know. Okay. I mean, I'm just representing what's going on out here. You know what I'm saying? From, from a perspective of a young dude that's been out in these streets in LA, you feel me? I'm just, you know, giving it to him raw and uncut. But at the same time, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not glorifying this violence that's popping out here because it ain't nothing to, to glorify. You know what I'm saying? I'm just really, it's like, I, I look at my music like, like a snapshot of my neighborhood, you feel me? What, what's your neighborhood like, man? Lots of big houses, pools, uh... Nice police officers and everything? No, no, nothing like that, you feel me? No. Are they protect and serve in your neighborhood? No, no, you feel me? They react, the police react, they don't stop nothing. It's still people getting killed, still robberies popping. Everything happened, they just react to it, you know what I'm saying? They take you to jail and make money off you after it happens. They don't stop nothing though. Okay. Police don't protect and serve nothing, they just react to it. I'ma tell you something, I swear, I read some article about Joel Santana. <laughs> and he, he was getting 15000 a show. I'm like, what, nigga get 15,000 a show? <laughs> I'm about to do that, fuck that. That was my goal, I'm like, I'm gonna get 15,000 and I'm gonna go Indian sell 50,000 units if I get $8 a CD. Yeah, I'm gonna be in the, in the ballpark of a half a million off my, off my, um. Lipsy's math is real. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, we could, that's, that's a cool mathematics, you know? And I, we didn't have no paranoia that came with that hustle. You ain't hear helicopters at night and think they was about to kick your door in. You ain't, you ain't have to have that paranoia that go with every other hustle that we was involved in. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, that's good math. So I ain't thinking about getting signed and going platinum. I was thinking about I could do 50,000 in mm. and I could get 15,000 a show. Yeah, that's cracking. On a block, we used to have a block in the hood. It was like 50 little homies outside selling work all day. And uh, it was that booming that it'd be 50 niggas come outside with 30 or 40 rocks and everybody get their sack off by two o'clock. And when I went back out there, Bodie like, man, yo shit flop, bro. <laughs> back out here on the block, yo album flop. <laughs> and that shit hit me in the heart. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I didn't even think my shit flop, but when he told me, I'm like, my shit did flop. So I am back out here swallowing dope when the police hop out. Mm -hmm. And you know, that was a rough time for sure. I was like, I, I kind of like, I was frustrated with just the return on my energy. I'm like, I gave a lot of sincere energy to the to the positivity and I ain't feel like, where did it go? Mm. So every time we would leave the studio, we come back and play music to the homies and everybody was like, damn, all right. It was turning into something. It was becoming something everybody was conscious of. So then when it just abruptly stopped because of the raid, other people like Draws reached out and he, he did his best to put me in the studio and got some equipment set up. Um, Johnny Shipes at that time was, was, you know, trying to help me book studios, but, you know, I'm an artist that I got to be able to, I'm like OCD a little bit, to where I got to create my space. I had to create my creative space, you know what I mean? To where I can, I can work at a big studio, but I need it for a month. I need it, I can't just come, I, you know, at that time, I, I hadn't reached the level of discipline to where I could just walk in the room and just, no matter what the environment is, I could just be creative. I'm not, I'm not, my intention is to be pure and to just be un, you know, like water. You know what I mean? Be be honest and whatever the, the feeling is, don't restrict it, say it. When I'm picking my songs, I'm being very uh, intention driven. You know, the, 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 the standard I'm holding the songs to is where I'm, you know, being real critical and being very, very calculated on what I'm trying to create with the choices of the songs. When I'm making them, I'm just going in mm. and then you know, it brought me to a space where I was kind of shooting or I was hitting my bullseye more frequently just because I was exercising. I was just in there every day working. And certain songs, as soon as they done, you know they for the album. Other yeah. songs, you got to let them mature. Piece of the movie, mm. you know what I mean? Like yeah. the marathon is an idea that it, it first was expressed on music. And then obviously through clothes with the marathon clothing. But yeah. then it's an idea that, you know, if you really think about the metaphor of the marathon, when you look at it as like life, yeah. it's about endurance, it's about preparing, it's about mentally breaking through your barriers that tell you I can't keep going. Where you, you know you're more capable of what, of you do, you more capable than you think you are, and then you're conscious of. What do you think Fats <laughs> would think about all the success Victory Lap has had throughout this year? Man, I think he would be satisfied and, mm. and inspired, you know what I'm saying? And just feel like job well done. He, he worked with us from day one, you know what I'm saying? Like mm. we was riding bikes with teenagers and like he would be, <clears throat> what's the word? Like, I don't know, like just 
feel Satisfied, completed. Contrived. You know what I'm saying? Satisfied. Feel like, mm. you know what I mean? Uh, full circle, job well done, like mm. we did it. You know what I mean? Okay. You know, that was just, we was at a Laker game and I had a I had a story when I was a kid. You know, my sister's father used to work at the forum mm. and the Lakers played at the forum mm. when I was young. So I'd be able to go to some of the games sometime. And you know, we'd be at, you know, some a little higher ups. Yes. <laughs> and I, I used to be a little kid trying to sneak down there and get autographs. And so I snuck down and I seen Denzel and I'm like, Denzel, I was probably eight. I'm like, what's up? Let me get an autograph. But the security grabbed me. Mm. He like, nah, bro, like go back to your seat. Denzel like, or his wife tapped him and he looked. And they're like, watch out, man. Let the little kid come get an autograph. And I came down, of course I, wow. and he gave me an autograph. So now I'm sitting next to him years later. And I'm like, hey, I don't even mean to be in your space, but Man, I was a kid, we was at the forum. And I told him what happened. I'm like, and your wife tapped you and you, you know, flagged security to let me through. And he, you know, he gave me some some good words, you know. And I, you know, I just shook his that's hand. Dope, dope. Yeah. yeah. How's Granny feeling about the success, man? Oh man. We took <laughs> Granny with us to Vegas. She oh, was yeah. on the Puma Jet with us. Yeah. <laughs> she was turned up. Man. Puma Jet is nice, yeah. man. Planes yeah. 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 Of it. For Joe, she had to uh bet on yourself. Yeah, so yeah I, every, every collab. Yeah, yeah. Because nah, in the Players Tribune thing, you you spoke a lot about her. Like for people that don't know, speak right? On her role. Yeah, Granny. Just I'm, I'm sure anybody grew up how we grew up. You know, Granny's an important part of the family, and my Granny was just like backbone. You know what I mean? And we lived with Granny for the first seven years of my life. You know what I mean? So we she had a two bedroom house, and it was me, moms, and bro in the other bedroom in the bed together, and Granny. Wake up, cook breakfast every morning. You know what I'm saying? Like an old school, you know what I mean? Structured, never really angry, always good energy. It's, she's, a, she's a unique person, but, you know, easy, easiest person to love. Anybody, you might get in the elevator and love Granny by the time you get off. <laughs> That's just how her spirit is. She talked to everybody. She just, you know what I mean? A happy person. Yeah, 86 and still wake wow. up every morning. You know, Sharp. Yeah, drop my son off. She had my son all day. She go out to the you know events with us and all that. Took her to the Pac premiere when the Pac movie mm -hmm. came out. She just you know she just a it's a pure spirit you know. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Man. Yeah, well, we see the family in the upfront, man. Yeah, you know my thing is really like a family business for real. Yeah. My dad is a part of the Marathon Clothing. He work every day at the, yeah, at okay. the shop. You know what I mean. My brother is my business partner. Yeah. You know my sister work with us. You know what I mean. Moms. Everybody, it's really like a family business for real.